With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Um, before we jump into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors, Care of Vitamins. I actually just took my Care of Vitamins right before I started this show. Swear to God. Um, they are a high quality subscription service that ships your own customized vitamin package straight to your door. All you have to do is go to their website, takecareof.com fill out a brief survey and they will curate your vitamins specifically for you. They're amazing. I love them so much. I've been taking my care of vitamins for years now and it really makes a difference in my health. And if you use code Holly 50, you get 50% off of your first order. So make sure you go to take care of and get healthy with their curated vitamin packages. Okay. Um, My guest today is somebody who has been in the industry for almost six years. She's been a penthouse pet, hustler honey, girl's way girl, and I, of course, had the pleasure of shooting her for Twisty's Treat of the Month. That's a story in itself that we're (laughs) going to tell you about. Um, Please welcome Scarlett Sage. Hi. 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 It's so lovely to see you. It's good to see you. It's been a while. I know. We were just talking about the last time that we saw each other was the movie for twisties the <laughs> the angels movie where molly stewart dies because she has she fucks herself with a cucumber and she's <laughs> allergic to the cucumber i don't know if you got that I, that part of the story because you weren't in that scene yeah i don't get the, i don't get the username and passcode to the, to the site but basically yeah the story was is molly stewart fucks herself with a cucumber has a fatal cucumber allergy that she's unaware of and then she dies and she shows up in heaven and she discovers um <laughs> abigail max scarlet sage jane wild kiara kiara noir and um um annie aurora <laughs> Nice. Um, and then we mess up her wings and then yes and then we and mess then up we have sex and then we have sex i gotta say that movie in itself was very tricky to shoot because of the angel wings that made the scenes like really hard to do because they just blocked the lights the camera like everything i think honestly your scene with jane wilde was probably one of the more successful scenes in terms of we had to like stop the least like you guys flowed through that pretty pretty well I think where it could have gone wrong is the scissoring with the wings because it wouldn't show anything. So I think that the way that we were, it just. I find that you often don't see anything with scissoring. And I've actually stopped trying to force seeing the vagina bumping and scissoring. Yeah. Because for me, I'm pretty sure that it's all about like the movement. It's like Mm -hmm. the closest thing to like a boy girl movement you know what i mean because girl girl is generally one girl's eating the other girl out so there's not necessarily a lot of like you're able to open up for the camera movement um i do i think that scissoring has a bad name for itself i think people judge it i love scissoring people judge you're you know you're right and i know this sounds funny to people but like scissoring is like a hot topic in the adult industry and most girls hate doing it and twisties would require like require that I shot scissoring in every scene. 
because it sells really well in ads. Yeah, I actually personally like it. You are you are a minor- of the minority. I'm going to tell you right now. It's a certain way you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You have to hit that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. And I think I figured out that sweet spot. And because we don't have to show a lot, I think sometimes they come from an angle of looking down. But if you're not trying to get the angle, it feels so good. And the movement, if you have a scene partner that knows how to move with you, Mm -hmm. it's an incredible position. I can actually come from it. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Okay, because that's like the porno myth that one, because there's always that you know, simultaneous coming and scissoring yeah. and porn, which like we all know is not real. <laughs> but you can actually come from it. That's amazing. Yeah. You hit that bone, the top yeah. bone. Uh huh. And so you lift your clit up kind of. Mm-hmm. And then you make sure you have a lot of lube or spit. Mm-hmm. And when you do that and you have a scene partner that's able to get into sync with you, mm-hmm. it's an incredible experience. Yeah. I've had bumps along the road, actual bumps, because, you know, when you don't scissor correctly, it bumps mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. But I mean, aside from that, I've had really good scissoring experiences. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You know what else I love about you too is that you're such a sweet girl and you come across very, in, like in person, very innocent <laughs> and kind of demure. I feel like the first time I shot you in a girl girl, I was kind of like, mm, I don't know, like what the scene's going to be like. Cause you're just like, you're just, you're just so lovely. Yeah. Like, you're new. I'm new too. So. I think when a girl is new, it's hard before. You've mm-hmm. never seen her have sex. Yeah. It's hard to find scenes online. Mm-hmm. And so you don't know what you're going to get when you... So you're yeah. going based on the first impression, you know, yeah. the opening of the book. So then you have to kind of like read the pages. And I'm an erotic novel <laughs> when you open the book. I, I know, honestly <laughs> will say like when we when you get in front of the camera, you are like... A different person. I swear. You are like a wild woman. Like you're a <laughs> great performer. Like really great. And I think it, I, people find it surprising if they don't know you. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And I honestly, it clicks. Mm-hmm. I you are spot on with the whole different person because when I am turned on, I don't. I don't want to say it's a sexual demon. I just want to say it's something. I, I just get intense. I get passionate. I I like to stare into the soul of my partner. And sometimes that can be intimidating Mm -hmm. for some partners, but sometimes when they're right there with you, it's an incredible scene. I actually just shot a girl-girl scene for Belessa House Mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, and it was with Aiden Ashley, Mm -hmm. and she's like that. She likes to look into your soul as you're having sex, and that is the hottest that eye contact thing. thing, not everybody, some people shy away from that. It is so, I mean, I believe that whatever sex you like is a sex that you like. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to look into someone's eyes, that is just as valid as someone looking into your eyes. Mm-hmm. But for me, it is a major turn on and quickly I just, it just brings out that like sexual demon side of me way easier yeah so, so you're, you're not an eye dodger no eye i like con- to stare <laughs> i like to not like <laughs> and that like no but i mean that does really bring up the intensity but it also makes the scene so much more intimate which i think makes some people uncomfortable but those are the scenes that i think really translate so well on camera because then you're actually believe it or not enjoying what you're doing yeah you know and it's more than just a performance i mean it's always a performance but if you can also like get that that intimate connection yeah. in it too like that doesn't always happen i think that eye contact is hot i think also it's nice to explore mm-hmm. and you know there are people who like to tease their senses where mm-hmm. they have blindfolds on and they are just submitting and you're feeling your senses of touch i think that's hot too i think that you can incorporate different senses mm-hmm. into sex so it's fun to explore. Yeah, sensory deprivation is is definitely adds like a whole new element. Like you don't realize how much you rely on your eyes until. And how everything heightens if yeah. you don't have eye. Like, have you ever done this is like kind of off topic, but have you ever done one of those sensory deprivation tanks? No. Those like floating like tanks. Have you I, heard of them? Are they like salt? 
Like the salt? Yes. So it's, okay. so yeah, they're those tanks. It, it literally like, so it's body temperature um, water that has enough salt in it so that you float. Mm -hmm. So you're not like touching the ground. So the idea is that it takes away the feel, mm -hmm. right? So you don't feel hot or cold. You're just like, it's just body temperature. Um, it's black, so you can't see anything. It's completely soundproof, so you can't hear anything. And then obviously there's no like smell in there. Um, those are wild. Have you done it before? Yeah. What is the experience like? So this, it was so bizarre. So I, I remember when I first got in there, I thought to myself, I'm like, this is stupid because I could feel like myself kind of bumping up against the mm -hmm. sides and it takes a while to relax into it and actually let yourself go. Yeah. Um, so at first I was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. And then like, dude, I just had, I had a wild experience in there. Like I kept thinking, I guess I was dreaming or hallucinating. I don't know, but I kept thinking that I, like I, in my mind, I got out of the tank, I took a shower, I put my clothes back on and I like walked outside and went to my car. And then I'd like wake up and I was still in the tank. Wow. Like it was crazy. And then I had this insane dream. And this is before Trump was president that Donald Trump owned, I don't know why his name came into it, that he owned the facility and he like roofied the water so that he could kidnap me. I think that when you take senses away, it your body just goes. It was crazy. I actually want to go back and do it again because they say if you do it quite a few times, it can also be very therapeutic if you're dealing with anxiety and stuff I like, like that. that. So um, uh, does it give you more of a meditation? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I, I have to try it. I've heard about it. I've never done it, but I, I would think... try it. It's it's a wild experience. For I sure. feel like I will be very nervous. It was nerve, nerve wracking at first because you're like it's pitch black in here. Yeah. Like, I mean, the tank's huge and it's got a high ceiling, so you're not like in a coffin yeah. or anything. But the like water's that. black, so then you don't know the depth of it. Yeah. Like you're, it plays tricks on totally. your mind. I feel, but I like that. Yeah. I, I like getting out of my comfort zone. I like being uncomfortable. Like for example, I just got back from Vegas. I was shooting for Sensex, and it was a threesome with Natalia Starr and Alex Mack, mm -hmm. and it was really cool. We, mm -hmm. they had us in a helicopter. Yeah. It there's there's in the air in the air. You would sex in a helicopter. In no, the air? I wish. That oh, would be I so like, cool. That would be so shit. iconic. I uh, Gustavo said something about that, and I was like, that is such a good idea. I need to do that because everyone's doing it in their Teslas, and I'm like, okay, you can do that, but what is different? And when he said that, I'm like, okay, hopefully by the time that this airs, I've already done it. But okay. <laughs> Wow. Well, you only this is going to air in like a little under three weeks. Oh, okay. So you you don't have that much time no, to have okay. sex in a helicopter. Well, we're going to AVN, so That's I mean. That's true. And you never know what <laughs> will happen in Vegas. <laughs> you might have sex in a helicopter. Might have sex in a You know, I thought that too, but the weight distribution, mm -hmm. you have to be, they, they put you far away from each other, so you're yeah. distributed. Yeah. So probably not safe i totally feel like it's against faa regulations you could probably get you could probably do a hand job okay it, you, you might be able to get away with but a you'd hand have job. to stay on this side but then the pilot has to be cool with it too so then it's like you have to pay the pilot off a little you're bit you're killing like, the dream hey. scarlet you're killing the dream you know oh wait no you know what chris chris has his pilot license okay chris who from brazzers he does oh chaos. chris yeah 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 of course uh, chris so, there um, we go there we go why am I not remembering anybody's fucking Alessandra. last name right now? Oh. Alessandra, yes. 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 You're right, he does. Yeah, so there we go. It's problem oh solved. All right, Chris. There we go, Chris. No. We're, we're counting on you. <laughs> Please is, make, make this a great happen. browser scene. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was fun. I was very nervous about the helicopter, mm -hmm. but it was beautiful. We went down the strip and they just took video of us because we were, you know, on a date. And so it was very beautiful and it was something i probably would never have done if that's an they expensive didn't do it. scene helicopter rides are not cheap it was fun and we just did a photo shoot with the ferrari i just posted that photo i'm obsessed wow it was so good wow that sounds awesome so good so let's um let's go to the beginning um you grew up in a small rural town mm -hmm. what was your upbringing like so my upbringing well my mom and my dad got divorced when i was one 
and I thought that was actually really good. Mm-hmm. I would have rather them divorce when I have no recollection right? versus having some sort of knowledge of what's going on and yeah. then them separating. Yeah. So it happened good that way. I, I don't know. I grew up in a very, very small town. We graduated with 71 people. Wow. Yeah. So wow. I knew everyone. And did you like it or did you feel suffocated? Did you want to get out? I didn't know I was suffocated until I got out, if that mm, makes sense. Yeah. I was in a little bubble. Mm-hmm. And so when you're in a bubble, you don't really realize until you get out and explore the world that yeah. you were in a bubble. Yeah. And I think that I became friends with people because we were all that we had kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was bullied in school, mm-hmm. so it didn't make it fun mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to get out of school as soon as possible because every day that I went to school, it was just someone. I'm very, I'm a very sensitive human being, and mm-hmm. I believe that when you are sensitive, people notice that. Oh, hundred percent. And they take advantage of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's why, like you know, when you hear about like predators you know and people who are like oh he wasn't that way with me but he was that way with somebody else it's because like they said they look you know it's just like predators they look for the right prey i believe that high school made me not care after that Mm -hmm. i had a lot of boundaries Mm -hmm. and so i just did not tolerate it whatsoever Mm -hmm. once i turned 18 i was sort of street smart Mm -hmm. because of that because i knew people's approach if it was genuine or not because of how they treated me. Yeah. I mean, I think that those experiences when you're young is as awful as they are. Um, they, they teach you like how to manage the world. I think that people who fare better in their adult life are people who probably experienced some hardships when they were younger. Yeah. Because you have to deal like one thing that is just true across the board, no matter where you are, no matter how old you are, no matter what you do is you have to deal with people and people can be, shitheads yeah people i kind of isolate myself now Mm -hmm. because i've had bad experiences with friends Mm -hmm. and so you know i'm I'm very grateful for the people that have been in my life as from 18 to 25 because those people really helped me Mm -hmm. uh become the woman that i am today Mm -hmm. so i'm very grateful for them do you have a a lot of friends um in the adult industry they're mostly outside um I have friends, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that I'm very friendly. My personality, I'm just, I like to talk. It's always been my personality since I was a kid. It's actually what I got bullied for because I talk too much. Mm -hmm. So things like that, um, I like (coughs) interacting with people. So I have friends. I just, it's really hard for me to have mean like deeper connection Mm -hmm. with people because of how i've been treated by my past friends Mm -hmm. it's harder they kind of made it harder for people to get in deeper than the surface for me i was best friends with this one girl and i forgave her so there's no animosity there's no hate there's I, I don't like being a hateful person because mm-hmm. to hate someone, you have to actually f- have feelings towards that. And when you put feelings towards a person or a thing, it just, it, it really drains you. Yeah. So she apologized. I took it as that and we moved our separate ways. So, but she, when she found out because I didn't tell her that I was doing porn, um, she kind of stabbed me in the back a little bit. Mm. She told people she was proud. You know, she said that she was proud that people were finding out. Um, it, she just did really hurtful things that I was such a good friend. Mm. I always, you know, was there for them. I did things, you know, I helped them get out of trouble with their, you know, parents. And so it was two of them that I was friends with. And it really hurt me. And so I think that a lot of being able to make friendships is harder now because of that. Hmm. Because I don't hurt you. Yeah. 
and I knew them for a while. They were childhood best friends. But yeah. with that, I had two amazing best friends. Mm-hmm. Like, we're still good to this day. Love them so much. They're so supportive of me. They, you know, one of my best friends is the reason that I am here. Mm. Um, so I'm very grateful for her. She's the one who showed me that you can be nice, but still have boundaries. Yeah, that's so, the tricky part, right? Yeah, she was yeah. like my savior friend. Yeah. And so she supported me. All she cared about was that I was safe. And when she found out that I was safe, she just always was there for me, always supported. You know, you're going to find, if you're lucky, maybe one or two people in your life truly that are like that, you know, like yeah. good friends are so hard to find. And, um, you know, I think that as we get older, we recognize that like our friend group just gets smaller and smaller Yeah. because we just have less time for we do. bullshit. And I think we also... Like you said, set boundaries and recognize that we want to spend time with the people who yeah. we care about. We also, I I used to take it so personally, but when I realized that everyone is their own main character of their life, mm-hmm. we, and that's nothing to be, like, I think we categorize that as selfish, but honestly, I believe that that's okay. Mm-hmm. You should be the main character of your life, but also be humble also you know love people and support people but you have your life it is your one life you go live it to the fullest so when my friends don't reach out if they're going through something i don't take it personal yeah because it has nothing to do with me yeah it's something to do with them i show my love and support when they're ready they come back and it's fine and we're here for each other i think this is a mistake that a lot of people make is that they take so many things that other people do really personally Mm -hmm. when almost every time that somebody does something whether it's hurtful to you or or inconsiderate or whatever it may be like it's it's almost never about you it's about them and what they're going through and I feel like sometimes we just have to manage what I have found in my wise old age (laughs) is that managing your expectations of people is kind of the key to happiness because I find that when I was younger I expected too much from people Mm -hmm. and everyone's human, you know, and sometimes we fall short of being there for someone or, you know, coming through because we're going through our own stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Like everyone's the main character in their own story. And I think that's an important thing to remember. Yeah. And everyone's doing the best they can with the tools that they have. Not everybody was raised in a way by a family who like gave her them the support or the love or or the knowledge to how to be a good person. Some people yeah. just like, they just don't know. And if they don't, then it's like, I'm proud of the people who get out of that, you know, yeah. who don't have the support, who don't have, you know, a good upbringing, but they don't dwell on it. They kind of make the most of their life. And they're mm-hmm. like, this is, I'm going to take this as an example of what not to do. Mm-hmm. And so I really respect that. And yeah. I know how hard it is to go from that. Like, I didn't have the worst upbringing. Um, I just had it. It was just very complicated, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, Southern roots, that whole Southern mindset, Mm -hmm. it kind of needs to be updated. What do you mean by Southern mindset? Was your family religious at all? Um, They're not. My mom, my mom is Christian, but she doesn't go to the church. She's not an avid church Mm -hmm. uh, person. Mm -hmm. She, I don't know. She, she says that she's Christian. So I take it as, okay, you're Christian. Right, right. Um. You know, when I got into the industry, she wasn't, you know, bringing up Jesus or <laughs> anything. <laughs> okay. She didn't so, tell you that you were going to hell. Yeah. That's good. She was, and I know some people who have gone through that and yeah. I empathize with them because it's hard. You want your family to support. You want them to at least to like, maybe they don't know, they can't empathize exactly what you're doing, but they support you because they see that you are the way that you're handling it Mm -hmm. is okay. I respect that. And I, I may not understand, but I am there and I respect you. Right. And And, you're lucky to have that because people don't. Yeah. And I think that my upbringing, I was the youngest. So I, how many kids in your family? Uh, I have a half brother. Okay. I have a half brother, but with my dad and my mom, my dad was a DJ. And so they met, when he was DJing mm. at a place. And so then they met um, and yeah, they had me. 
And so for Christmas, I would go down to Virginia Beach, you know, my whole life and Christmas, like any holiday, sometimes the summer and see my grandmother, see my family. My cousins are way older than me. Mm -hmm. uh, my, co my oldest cousin is the same age as my mom. So he's 55. He okay. was born in 67. Okay. So my aunt is turning about like, she's in her 70s right now. Right, right. And my cousin, you know how we have that one cousin that we just latch on to when we grow up? I don't know if anyone else resonates, but for me, I have this one cousin that I latched onto, and she is 18 years older than me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I was the baby for the longest time, and then my family, uh, my uncle, he had twins, mm -hmm. and they're the babies now. Okay. They just graduated high school. So then how did, um, you know, from growing up in the small rural town, mm -hmm. how did you end up getting into the adult industry? So I don't really, you know what's funny is I don't quite remember fully how I got in. Um, I just know that I had Motley reach out to me. Okay. And I... How did they find you, though? You know, I just... It's been so long that, like... You must have been modeling or something. I wanted to model. I was too short to model. Right, I'm but you... <laughs> I mean, they didn't, like, just, like, find you on Facebook. Yeah. I really, truly forgot. Really? <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> I'm trying you to weren't think. camming or anything before that? Okay, so backstory on my sexuality. I liked watching porn. Okay. I watched porn a lot. Okay. And I really enjoyed it. Okay. And so I watched, uh, I read erotic novels. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. And I did not know how to have sex yet. Okay. I was I lost my virginity at 17. Okay. And so all I knew how to do was sext. Mm -hmm. So I just, I love sexting. Okay. And I think that's why I'm so good at dirty talking. Okay. So when I was brought up about like the opportunity with Motley, I didn't say no, but I didn't know that these people it was a business. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we like think about that being a business. The porn industry specifically, or Motley? Uh, as an the agency? porn, the porn industry. Okay. When I'm watching these scenes, yeah, I didn't think that these people are business. Yeah, people, I, I guess that know? makes sense because I think, <laughs> I think people see it's such like the black sheep of the entertainment industry. True. You know, like people can't imagine that it could be like a professional set and that it could be something. It wasn't just like people calling each other and like, Hey, come over and let's have sex on my couch. And we'll like set up the camera. Yeah. That it could be something that was like had a producer and had a corporation behind yeah. it. And like people were on payroll. And, like I think all that boring shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The paperwork. Oh my gosh. The yeah. Paperwork is the death of me on set. I'm the worst. Yeah. It, I lot. like, it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot. but I think also I didn't have great sex ed, <laughs> so like I most people in this country, <laughs> I, I didn't have anything to work with. Mm -hmm. I think your sex ed's better if you live in the valley mm -hmm. <laughs> or in California because yeah. I think you're more around. You're around it, yeah. So you're able to put two and two together. Mm -hmm. For me, there's I only just... there's only like required sex education I think in 13 states in, really? in the U.S. Yeah. I I had it. But your parents could opt you out of right. certain things. Correct. Like with wet dreams. I still don't know how wet dreams happen because my mom opted me out of that. She's like, you don't need to know that. I'm like, actually. I mean, to be fair, I don't you know. don't have a penis. So I, I, I guess technically. <laughs> but now I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, and I haven't Googled it. I don't know why. That just reminded me to Google it. But. To Google wet dreams? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just basically like when a guy gets an erection at night and then like he ejaculates like in his sleep. Oh. Which is like common for like adolescent boys because your hormones are out of fucking okay. control. Cool. Yeah, that's all it is. All right. Well, there's yeah. that. What's so bad about that that you had to sign off on that? But anyways. I mean, you're talking about penises and ejaculation. Okay. So my mom, the way that my mom had the first sex talk with me. We, I sat her down and I said, I just learned about sex. Mm -hmm. 
I was looking into a science book and for some reason it had sex education in it, mm-hmm. but not too much. It was pretty surface level. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, I was like, mom, what is sex? And she looks at me and she's like, go read it up in the encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. <laughs> she, I swear to God, she gave me an encyclopedia to look up what sex is. What did it say? Surface level. Huh. A penis going into a vagina. And honestly, with lesbian sex now, learning about sex, there's so many different ways to have sex. Yeah. That I'm like, that is just surface, way surface level of yeah. sex. Yeah. So then it, I'm very curious. So I was like, what is sex? And we didn't have, I mean, I had access to Google. I don't think it just registered with me that I could look it up online. Hmm. Like today's era where we just, if we have a thought, we just Google it really quick. Right, right. So also I don't think I had a phone at that time. And it was back before iPhone. It Mm -hmm. was when we had like the Blackberries. Mm -hmm. For like the smartphones where everything's at your fingertips. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I shared a computer, so I was scared to look it up. on the computer so I didn't know what sex was for a while and then learning sex ed just basic things and then then I was curious Mm -hmm. about sex so I didn't lose my virginity until again I was 17 and I was just scared (laughs) I was nervous yeah I didn't know so I watched porn I watched porn not to learn I just enjoyed watching it. Mm -hmm. And I really liked sexting. So I would tease the boys. Mm -hmm. So I would like talk the talk, but I wouldn't walk the walk. Right. So some people were probably like, oh, she's she doesn't know what she's doing, which I didn't. I was a virgin, but I knew what I was doing. Like my mind is very powerful. I like Mm -hmm. talking. I can think. I can see when I'm reading, I can see it play out in my head. Mm -hmm. And so I loved the erotic novels for that reason. Yeah. I I actually want to write an erotic novel. You should. That's my next, if I have time, I need to sit down and just write one because- I mean, you you know now, you didn't know sex then, but you know what sex is now. So. And I, like I said, I think that helped me with my dirty talk. Yeah. I was very nervous on camera at first. I was very shy. But once I, once I met everyone, cause you know, the industry is small. Mm-hmm. So you work with the same directors, producers, camera, sound. So once you are in it for a long time, it's just like your normal people that you yeah. hang out with. And you're like, oh, hey. It's like, like a big family. Yeah. I was working for a couple of directors different different days and they've seen me do girl girl but I looked at them and I said I'm so nervous right now they're like why I've seen you have sex so many times I'm like yes but this is different because I'm doing boy girl now (laughs) so now you're watching me do something very different yeah so I was nervous at first but then after a while I got Okay, I didn't know you were doing Boy Girl now. Yes. Okay, all right. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about that. First, we're going to go back to the beginning and find out. I want to hear about your first sex scene because I was oh, yeah. it interesting. And then we'll get into uh, the fact that Scarlett's back, and she's doing Boy Girl because that, uh, that is an added element I know. that I didn't know about. So I'm excited <laughs> to hear. All right, guys, hang tight. We'll be right back. With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, Plus, enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. 
All right, so we are back. Okay, so <laughs> let's fast forward. Mm -hmm. So Motley reached out to you. Obviously, you agreed to give it a shot. Yeah. Tell us about your first scene. So my first scene... Huh, that is a very good question. That is a very good question. You don't remember your first scene? You know, when you're when you're in that amateur... Yeah. You know, there's so everyone's shooting you. Yeah. Like different, like team ski. You have like the amateur companies that you shoot once and then that's it kind of thing. So Maybe tell us about one of your first ones that like sticks out in your mind for whatever mm -hmm. reason. So it was for a, it was a amateur site mm -hmm. and it's called Net Video Girls. Oh yes, so I So they them. do like the calendar shoot, you come mm -hmm. in. So how, the perception of the viewer, it's you come in for a calendar shoot mm -hmm. and you don't know what they're expecting of you. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, yeah, like you're working for, you know, this is a sex scene. And they're like, oh, like I just thought that I was doing calendar modeling. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, like, are you cool with this? And I'm like, well, like, sure. Why not? Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, they're like, you know what's going on. Okay, yeah, this so is what's scripted, going on. It's a scripted like, oh, this is porn? Yeah. I normally wouldn't, but okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun in that way. And I was in drama. I liked acting. So I thought it was so fun. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is what porn is. I get to just be a character every time. Because mm -hmm. it was just, I did it for drama class. So I'm like, this is so fun. I get to like tap into that. Yeah. And so... I did the scene and they did a cream pie and they were like, are you okay with the cream pie? I'm like, yeah. They're like, okay, how do you want to do that? I was like, oh, I could act surprised. Like we were just brainstorming. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I could act surprised. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were going to do that. Like, so this is a boy girl scene. It was a boy girl scene. Okay. Cause I did boy girl in the beginning. And then um, you went to just girl. girl. Yeah. I was having like, cause issues. I only remember you as a girl, girl performer. Yeah. I had to cancel a lot cause my body wasn't in tune with what I wanted to do. Gotcha. And so I knew that canceling makes, especially if you're new, it looks bad. Yeah. So I wanted to, I, I'm a very professional person. I want to show that I'm professional. Mm -hmm. So if that means doing girl, girl and doing things that I'm able to show up on set and like deliver a good scene, I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't have a name to myself that people could say, Oh, like that's unlike the brand that she produces. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to Girl Girl. But okay. now I'm back with Boy Girl. I've had zero issues with it. Like my badge has been good. I've been more in tune with my body, taking care, mm -hmm. especially boric acid now. That's a game changer for mm -hmm. the industry. Mm -hmm. um, it helps balance out mm -hmm. uh, your pH level. So mm -hmm. you're, cause you're working with a lot of talent mm -hmm. and we're all, you know, just swapping different pH. And so it's, you have to- You're talking like boric acid, like tablets. Suppositories. Like suppositories in your Yeah, vagina. please don't take them orally or you, you might die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, yes, I would say like, if you're going to, you know, try anything for your sexual health, please like do some talk research. Talk to a doctor. On it. Yeah, talk to a doctor because mm -hmm. every girl does have their own version. Like you get, one thing about being important is you get mm -hmm. to learn your body. And so you yes. know what works for you. So I know some girls like boric acid, other girls like that's yes. not good for them and they have a different method. So but everybody's different. Talk to your primary care physician because that's where I start. So I talk mm -hmm. if I hear something through the grapevine of the industry, I will go back to my PCP and I'll say PCP. That sounds like a drug. It is. It, it is a drug. Oh, anyway. It's OK. It's not what you meant. It's fine. Primary care physician. I talk to my primary care physician of anything that I hear about the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, iodine. I'll talk, I have to talk about iodine. I just heard about that. But with boric acid, I talked to my uh, physician. She said it was no problem. Mm -hmm. So just get it from the doctors. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, the reason behind that, but mm -hmm. they do have them over the counter. Mm -hmm. I've had no issue with uh, any boric acid suppository. Okay. So you start off doing boy girl. So you did the boy girl scene. So you did a surprise cream pie. So we did a surprise cream pie. And I remember when everyone found out, oh my gosh, when everyone found out that I did porn, it was wild. I was going to ask you what that was like, because coming from a small town, I've talked to so many other girls who same thing came from a small town. And like once that news got out, it was like wildfire. And especially in 2016, I feel like a lot of people now with the with the 
popularity of OnlyFans, yeah. I think it's more acceptable. And especially with being in Virginia, where it's still a little conservative, mm-hmm. now that we have OnlyFans, it's, you know, okay. Yeah. So definitely glad. I'm, I would never wish for it to be hard for anyone mm-hmm. because what you experience when people aren't supportive it's just, it really gives you thick skin mm-hmm. and that's a positive. You just, I believe you, if you don't have to go through something, don't go through something. So yeah. I'm so excited that everything is becoming open mm-hmm. sexually. Yeah. So they found out and it was wildfire. People know people from different counties. So I think about 10,000 people knew. Because people, you know, I know a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend. Wow. And it just, there's nothing else to talk about. Yeah. So (laughs) it spread like wildfire. And I don't know how people found out. I just started noticing that people were following my account. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's about to happen. And I had a flight back to Virginia. And it was the same week that I had the flight back to Virginia that people found out. Oh, wow. And it was interesting because in your head at first, you're like, oh my gosh, people found out. Like, it's not that you're, it's not that you're, um, you're ashamed. It's that you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with people, Mm -hmm. you know, and their thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to, you shouldn't have to go through that. Your life is your life. You should be able to live the life how you want. And if people don't agree with it, then just go on with your life. But that's not what you experienced going back to Virginia. And so I had to make a decision of, do I stay and cancel my flight? It was the same week. Do I stay and cancel my flight or do I go back home? Mm -hmm. And a part of me wanted to cancel. And I just had this nudge of courage that said, no, you're going to go home. You're not going to allow them to create this narrative and you're going to make your own narrative and you're going to own it. And so I went home and I saw a lot of people. I went to soccer games. I went, I was on the rescue squad at that time. Mm -hmm. So my rescue squad people found out and we went to lunch and dinner and, you know, they were cool with it. Some people weren't in the rescue squad. I actually got kicked off of the rescue squad for that. But it's fine. I moved to L.A. It, yeah. you, I always believe rejection is a redirection. So that's it led good, me. That's a good thing to remember. So I realized that people weren't going to say anything to me. Mm-hmm. It was just. Whispers behind your yes, back. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that made me f- feel better yeah. because I was able to say, to talk to people, to show them that I'm still the same person. Yeah. I always kept my sex life private. I I call myself like the Hannah Montana because I people didn't really think that I was having sex like that mm-hmm. and that I was sexually I enjoyed sex mm-hmm. and that I wanted to explore sex cuz I wasn't a, I wasn't a pro at sex mm-hmm. but I was so curious about sex. I wanted to learn more. And you know, I got caught in high school, you know, having sex with my best friend who was a girl and not caught caught but people she told people which is fine I it's fine yeah um and so people found out now I had sex with a girl before I had sex with a guy Hmm. so and I don't know if I fingered her it was like you know what I mean we're not gonna explain that part but I pretended for so long to not be who I was because mm-hmm. I cared about what people thought. Yeah. And I think that when people found out about this, it was such a breakthrough on me not caring about what people thought. It was almost like a liberating experience. Exactly. Because it's like there's something about once you do porn, it's like you really put yourself out there. And so, yeah, I feel like it almost feels like there's nothing to hide after that. There's something very authentically honest about porn stars. And I've said this like so many times because I've worked with celebrities and I've worked Mm -hmm. with playboy models and fashion models and porn stars. And like across the board, porn stars are by far my fucking favorite people. Like they're just 
really genuinely and unapologetically who they are. Yeah. And I think that that's something that you don't come across a lot of people in the entertainment business. And I, that's what I love about them. Yeah, I, I wonder, I'm not making assumptions. I wonder if that's because when you are so comfortable with yourself, mm -hmm. just even, you know, to the point where, yeah, it may be on the internet, but if you're so comfortable with sharing yourself and, you know, we, I think people have this assumption of the industry of, oh, we have sex so much and we have sex. I have sex with almost the same male talent. That's, <laughs> like <laughs> That's another funny thing that you're right. People totally get wrong because they'd be like, oh my God, these poor women in porn, they're having sex with all these strangers, all these men you're getting railed by thousands of men and it's like it's literally the same like 10 to eight to 10 dudes yeah. like it, i swear to god it's the same people like over my and over my again. body count goes up more with women than men for sure i have over a hundred women on my body count and i think i have like 10 15 with yeah. guys yeah. including my personal life including my before getting into the industry yeah. Like I have more women bodied on me than, and yeah. honestly, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, um, so let's talk about some of the shoots we've done together. Mm -hmm. Um, let's, because we, and we, cause we teased it. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your twisty street of the month. shoot. <laughs> was that the first time we shot together? No, our first scene was in 2016, I think the end of 2016 and it was, I'm trying to remember the concept. The concept was I got stood up and I was sad. I had brown hair at the time because mm -hmm. that's when I like went back to brown hair and I was so sad and the waitress just was consoling me and somehow we just led into sex that way. Oh, right. Okay. It was at uh, Maria's location in downtown. LA. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that was the first time meeting you, meeting Rosalinda. I love Rosalinda. Yeah, she's amazing. Like, she, she has my heart forever. Like, yeah. She's just such a good soul. Yeah. And so I appreciated. I, I, yes, sorry. I, I'm remembering now because you came in and I remember it was the first time I'd shot you and you were new mm -hmm. and it was a restaurant scene. And so there, you guys were having sex like on the tables, which is, so you know, and like a lot of people don't think about this, but I always consider the comfort, yeah. like the furniture that you're going to have sex yeah. on or the lack of it. Like, yeah. where are they going to work? Mm -hmm. What positions are they going to do? Is this going to be uncomfortable? Are they going to like yeah. slip? Is this going to hurt their knees? Like, I think about all those little things. And then I think about your perspective because you have to get these shots. You have to see what's going on. Right. So I'm also thinking, it's funny that we think of the opposite. You know, you think of me, I think of you. <laughs> so we make a great team. <laughs> But yeah, I remember, and you were amazing. And I, th I feel like there was this one position that you did, like on the table, like squat, because the tables were also like a little rickety too. Yeah. Like squatting on some girl's face, and like you rode her in a way that was really like, I was concerned that that wasn't going to work because like the furniture wasn't going to support that or it was going to be too uncomfortable for you. But you were great. And I remember actually writing to the producer, like my boss at Twisties. Um, I was like, this new girl's Scarlett's awesome. Like, she's great. Yeah. No, you totally blew me away. Thank you for reminding me of that. God, you know, it's so crazy. Like, that's why I love having people that I've worked with so many times on because you remind me of stories that I forgot. Yeah. You I've, see so many. There's so many stories, different faces. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, different that scenes. happened. And yeah. OK, so I do remember that. Oh, my gosh. I was so embarrassed, though. So dry mouth is a thing because when we're moaning, when we're, you know, so enjoying good. ourselves and the air in California is so dry. It is so dry. And so that was before I found out about the dry mouth mouthwash. Never I again. I actually didn't know there was a dry mouth, oh, mouthwash. Oh, I'll send we, it to you. Okay, it is you're... a game changer. It like keeps your mouth, like your throat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is good. Okay. So go, go on. Please Anyways. tell the story because it's so good. Um, so I was so nervous. It was my first time shooting with you. I actually, I probably have seen Suze Randall's photos in Playboy because that was the first magazine that I saw. So mm -hmm. when I was like put two and two together, I was so nervous. And so I don't remember what she was doing. Oh, she was like fingering me. 
and I was moaning and it was dry. It was so dry. And so I'm like, oh, let me taste myself. And I remember she goes and she puts it in my mouth. And at that moment, it was so dry in my mouth that I was like having to like cough. So I was like, let me taste it. And I was like, (coughs) (laughs) (laughs) and I turned white. I was like, oh, is she going to think? something else I promise I I am clean I am a I need like before this I brushed my tongue because I was like I have coffee breath like that's who I am so I was like I hope she doesn't think that I'm like ill prepared for well, this scene <laughs> and that I <laughs> so because I remember because you did like so it took you a while to recover to explain that it was dry mouth I remember that. so so you like took her fingers and then you were like <laughs> and then you were like coughing for a while and and she like stopped and all of us were like oh my goodness like <laughs> wow she tasted herself and she, no. like she can't taste that bad because that girl was down there and she yeah, was fine she was fine she didn't say she didn't cut and then she like and then you recovered you're like i have dry throat and then yeah like, i was like i have dry mouth right now because i was i was new i didn't know what to do i didn't know how to like <laughs> I was way, so embarrassed. I was like, across. oh my gosh. I, I swear have, I have dry mouth. I have the raw footage of everything I've ever shot. So I, would, I have that somewhere. Let me, I'm going to make it a mission. I'm going to find it. And I'm going to send you, I will cut that part out and I'll send it to you. Because that really was fucking hilarious. I, and I recovered off of that. Because I'm like, I know who I am. I know my pussy does not smell. I mean, so we, like, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to laugh it off as like, chop it up as like an embarrassing like time. And it's like of all times for it, like for me to cough because I, I believe I was like holding it in, trying to hold it in because I, I was new. So I didn't know how to cut. Right. So I didn't know that like we could cut and, you could and then you could, cut and you could get some. Yeah. And then you could like go tight frame and then like work your way out to show me. So like I didn't know that like, I didn't comprehend that. I was like, I am not going to cough. I am not going to cough. And then when she did that, I was tr- I think I was just trying to get like, whatever spit yeah, I had just left. Triggered it. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> So funny. So good. But at least you were like, I like this girl. I'm going to bring her back. Yeah. I mean, again, like, trust me, if you were, if there was some problem down there, oh, I, I would have heard about I it would from know. the other talent. I we would know. We would because know. Because I'm so vigilant on my. Yeah. Some girls have come I'm in and they so don't have good vigilant. hygiene and I've had to have conversations with them about it. I'm so nice about that. So. I'm very sweet about that. But I, I will overthink it. Yeah. I'm so analytical with of how course. I smell, how I taste, yeah, I mean, how I'm like pretty, my like... tongue. Like I will not show my tongue if I know that I have not brushed my teeth yet. If mm-hmm. we're doing scenes and they're like, we just need to take photos or we need you to show your tongue. I'm like, hold on. I need to cut so that way I can go brush my tongue. Yeah. Because for me, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. You know, other people, I'm like, I cannot choose what other people are going to do. All I can do is choose how I'm going to run You can run only my body. you can choose to brush your own tongue. Yeah. But I will say something. Yeah. I, to an extent, I will say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's respect at yeah. that point. And also, do some girls are like, who honestly don't know. And it's okay. Like, they just don't know. It's okay. We're yeah. here to teach each other. We're here to learn. And you know what? As long as everything's okay, that's fine. Yeah. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. Um. God, thank you for reminding me of that story because it's such a good oh one. Oh, my and gosh. I had forgotten. And then the Rosemond. Am I saying it right? Yes. Yeah, so so your Twisty Tree of the Month shoot. Yeah. We went. That was, whew. That was. Yeah. It was so cold. It was so cold. So we went out to an abandoned mining town. So cool. It was like a two-hour drive. Mm-hmm. Um, and we drove all the way out there. And not only was it so cold, it was so fucking windy. Mm-hmm. Because I remember, like, we did. I think Ozzy was doing makeup that day. Yeah, I love Ozzy. And she like set your hair and everything. And then we went outside and your hair was just like, <gasps> like a fucking windstorm. It was like, it was so yeah. hard to take photos because you're, it was just like impossible. And yeah. then we finally did some stuff in the buildings and we got some really beautiful shots. It but was, it was really fucking gorgeous. freezing. And I have to say like, once again, kudos to you because <laughs> you were a trooper. Like, I really felt terrible for you. Those were some... Those are some, like, unworkable conditions. Like, that was a lot to put you through. My perception, and this goes for anything, when I'm on set, my eye is on the prize. Yeah. So whatever conditions I'm going through, 
I'm like, I know that this is going to turn out phenomenal. Yeah. I know these are going to be amazing photos that I'm proud of. Like, I was cold in Vegas when we were doing our shoot and we were taking photos in the Ferrari. I was like, these photos are going to be bomb. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. And what do you know? Photos are bomb. Yeah. Like, I just think about that and I just go through it. I'm cold temporarily, but those photos are going to be out there forever. And those photos are going to be what market me. So... That's yeah. my that's my thought process. Going no, you're that. you're right, and that's what I try to remind girls sometimes when we are working in like pretty rough conditions. I'm like, I know you feel uncomfortable and awful now, and obviously I'm going to do my best to like, you know, accommodate accommodate sure, you as much yeah. as I can. But like in the end, like these pictures are going to like be forever, and you'll forget how cold you were, and but, but you'll gonna, remember mm-hmm. like the results. So. And fans post your photos all the time, mm-hmm. so when I see those photos, I'm like, oh. I remember that shoot we were in an abandoned house like, yeah and that that to me has a backstory because i would go in virginia we have a lot of abandoned houses and we would me as a kid i would go into like abandoned houses and like discover that mm-hmm. so it, yeah. it kind of like tied into my actual life yeah so it was fun so um you're back uh you took a little break mm-hmm. during covid yeah um, as we all did and then you, you yeah. took a while to come back, but now you're back and you're shooting Boy Girl. Um, how's yeah. that been going? It's been going good. So uh, when I was on the break, I went back to school. Mm-hmm. I went and did trade school, which honestly, like, I am I love trade school. I think it's really, you know, everyone has. We, we all have a job in society of what we need to do. Mm-hmm. And without one, we would lose our minds we, mm-hmm. we wouldn't know what to do because we rely on each other mm-hmm. for our resources and so for me I really got into skincare mm-hmm. and I went to school as an esthetician and so that falls into trade school and so I graduated in July I love it I'm still in the works with uh dealing with getting my licensure mm-hmm. but it's coming soon, probably in the next couple of months. I'll be licensed. So what's what's your goals with that? Do you want to, like, open your own salon or do you want to just, like, work freelance? So my goal for that, depending, because I do have my business now. Mm-hmm. So I want to water my business that I'm in now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to get licensed so that way I can start getting additional training. They only teach you surface level mm-hmm. training. Mm-hmm. in school so yeah. I'm gonna tie in get training for you can do acne specialist you can do chemical peels there's so many different avenues that you can put under your belt mm-hmm. I want to gain the education now so that way whenever if I want to incorporate it into the business that I'm in now you know with porn mm-hmm. uh, in the adult industry I want to incorporate that yeah, I mean, like you'll, you definitely won't have a shortage of access to girls who are yeah. going to want, you know, good skincare. So you have a great like demographic to work with. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, you know, I don't know, of course, the first thing that pops into my head is like Scarlet Sage's facials, not that kind of facial. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there sometimes and think in my head, of course, I went to one industry where I get facials and then go to another <laughs> industry that. I give facials. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah. And people joke about that. People who know me, they're yeah. like, oh, you traded facials for facials. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Haha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's funny, actually. One of them, my my brother's ex high school girlfriend, um, who uh, we were very close to as a family, and we're still actually, she's actually my parents' doctors mm-hmm. now which is funny, but she started off, she's a gynecologist also. And so we oh, kind of cool. joked together. We're like, we both spend all day looking at vaginas. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> That's actually. Um, there's a couple questions I have for you before we finish. Um, I, I don't have my phone in front of me. It's across the room and I don't feel like getting up and getting it. <laughs> but I know that one of my Patreon members, Dave, did send me a question for you. And um, I can't remember it verbatim, but it was basically about your last name Sage because there's other performers in the industry yeah. with the last name of Sage. So like where did that inspiration come from? That's actually a really good question, Dave. Seriously, it's so when I came up with my name, I had no idea what I wanted. And there's one name, you know, you know how we regret. We have regret. There's this one name that I was like, man, I wish I used. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, Scarlet Sage 
when I came up with a name, I wanted a name that I've never heard. I did not know a Scarlet. Mm-hmm. I no recollection of a Scarlet, so it did not tie in with anyone I knew. Yeah, you don't want to name yourself something that like yeah, you don't want to think of somebody else with yeah. your own. Yeah, I wanted to be my own identity. I'm very like, I kind of go towards like different. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like oh, what's different? Mm-hmm. So Scarlet came up. I was like, oh, I like Scarlet. Yeah. It's kind of like. It's a beautiful name. It's beautiful. It's also sexy. It, you can play into it a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, Scarlet or oh, yeah. Scarlet. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. different. It had a different tone to it for just one name. Mm-hmm. And then my last name, I was thinking, I wanted, um, it's called a double entendre, mm-hmm. right? With the SS. Or oh, no, it's alliteration. Alliteration. Yes. So, for the alliteration with that, I wanted an SS. Because I, I just feel like if you have one, like Scarlet, like I want it to be. Yeah, no, it f- like it flows. It like rolls off the tongue yeah. when you have the, the first two letters be the same. So when I thought of it, Sage the Gemini, mm-hmm. he's a rapper. Okay. And he was pretty big at that time. Okay. And so I was like, Scarlet Sage. It's mm-hmm. like, okay. And I'm a Gemini. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Scarlet Sage. Yeah. All right. It, it sounds good. I like it. I think it's a nice. So name. that's how I came up with it. That's a nice name. Did you have to like Google to make sure that like there was no other porn stars named yeah, Scarlet Sage? Because so- that's definitely happened where I know girls have come in and they picked a name of somebody who already had it, and I have to be like, you can't. I you had can't that use happen name. on Pornhub, mm-hmm. but recently. Oh, with your name. With my name. Yeah. Yeah. And so when people were searching up Scarlet Sage, yeah, it was her. I was like, that's not fair. I did my research. Well, to also sure. too, if you trademark your name, um, Ooh, that's good. Then other people can't. That's good. They can't because the trademark. I mean, obviously, other people can be named Scarlet Sage, but they can't be Scarlet Sage within the adult industry because it's all like specific to whatever okay. industry you're in. I think everyone's pretty chill. I think if like somebody has similar names, I think that they're like okay. because it's not in their interest either. Yeah, to they have people stand Google out. them and then find you. Yeah, because yeah. if you're you want to be. You you want someone to Google you and it's only you. Yeah, I've had boutiques though, so I'm mm. sorry to the boutiques. But Scarlet, there was a Scarlet Sage boutique, and I was like, oh, <laughs> sorry, you're about Maybe to you can get do facials there. <laughs> I think it was like jewelry. Oh, <laughs> I or should buy some though. Honestly, expand into into skincare. Yeah, jewelry that's and skincare, true. Like- so for for Google, no one had that name, yeah. so it was nice. Okay, so last question, (laughs) very, very important question. Mm -hmm. Um, Is penis size important to you? That is a really good question, actually. It is a a question that is asked a lot. Asked a lot. And I think, you know, I feel like some people have different opinions, but I feel like every time that I hear someone else give their opinion of it, we're pretty much the same. It's how you work it. It is the motion in the ocean, how you work it. You can have a small penis and it still feel really good. Mm-hmm. It just depends on like the angle that you put the girl in. It's the way that you stroke it in. You know, it's the teasing. A lot of it is the foreplay. Mm. So that's where I think a lot of guys fall short. Nobody, no teaches. pun intended, is the is the foreplay. And women take a while to get going. Yeah, like we don't. We're not like guys where we like kind of get hard right off the bat. Yeah. Like. It takes a while to warm us up. We're like an old car. You gotta like gun the engine a little bit, yeah. like let her warm up before and then you we'll take purr. her out of the garage. <laughs> and then we will purr. Yes. But I think that that also stems into not having the education on yeah. how to please. Definitely uh, not having, but it's not even just sex education. It's like, okay, sure, if you get sex education, you get sex education, but then well, there's guess- no education on like, no one talks about pleasure. That's true. You know what I mean? That I, I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. And then also, too, if you're getting your sex education from porn, and look, again, it depends on the porn that you're watching. Mm-hmm. Different porn is different. You yeah. know, if you watch something that's more along the lines of probably like Valesa House or Erica Lust stuff, that's more like female oriented. You might see more of that intimacy and that foreplay mm-hmm. in those scenes. But if you go and watch like some random evil angel gonzo scene, like, it's generally the girl yeah. gives the guy a blowjob and then he sticks in and she's ready to go. Yeah. Um, 
but that's not and how are, most people work. Yeah, and both are hot. Both, both are totally are hot. super hot. And, you know, as a performer, we know what we're getting ourselves into yeah. that day. There's nothing that we're, like, oblivious about. So it's nice because I like to have those days where it's a lot of dialogue and I get to play into that and I get mm-hmm. to play a character. And then I also like the gonzo scenes where I'm able to just go in and just have fun and just let it all out. Yeah. Like, let it all out, be dirty, get slobbery, get, like... I like having both. I like having both sides, Mm -hmm. and they balance each other out. I think it makes me me. Yeah. Um, So yeah, I think that getting your education on porn, porn is made to just enjoy. It's fantasy. You know, some of it might not be fantasy. Some of it may be realistic, Mm -hmm. but that's why we have the niches of porn. Right. So you have to find the right niche. You can't go in and learn how to please a girl on Kanto. Yeah. You know, you have to find the niche for that. Yeah. Of pleasure. But also, too, like maybe you shouldn't be looking for your sex education on women from a porn scene. Maybe you should be listening to podcasts, reading books, like specifically pointed towards that. I think. That's also a reason why I'm so excited that sex is just becoming so open Mm -hmm. is that now with also with technology, we just have so much information to just absorb from, you know, sex. What are they? They're the they're the people who just talk about pleasure. What is their occupation? Like a sex therapist? Similar to sex therapist. I'm sex drawing, educator. I'm drawing a blank, but I've seen them a lot on Twitter now. Okay. And I've been following them. I've been incorporating them into mm-hmm. my little, like, following bubble. Are you talking about, uh, like, one specific person or one specific brand? No, just multiple. Okay. Just talking about sex. Like, there was this girl. I, I'm so bad at names. It takes me three. I've learned. It takes me three times to remember a name. Okay. And so, also, I know if I see you on social media, I know you by your name username yeah yeah yeah. no i understand so and it said that the best sex is the sex that you like yeah and i really and that's what got me to follow her because i'm like sex is so it there's an array Mm -hmm. of pleasure we is this a sex podcast that you're talking about no i need to get into sex podcasts okay i think that she is Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay. I was wondering if it was sex with Emily. I'll have to. Maybe. Because she's a, she's a big podcaster. But it's she hard. also, like, I think has a blog, too. It's also hard because, like, on social media, like, we all pump our brands on yeah. social media. So when I see someone on social media, I'm not sure where they come from. I don't know if they are pumping their social media to get you to go to a podcast. Right. Uh, so I just see their content. Gotcha, gotcha. And I'm like, I like that content. So I follow it. Uh, but that I really liked that quote. Because mm-hmm. it just, I think that we all try to figure out like, oh, what, you know, this sex is the best. This sex is the best. Yeah. And honestly, I think that whatever you like, whatever you enjoy and your boundaries is like the best sex. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, okay. Well, the lights are going out. Yeah. <laughs> in the studio. So I think that that's our, yeah, our it's, cue to wrap it it's up. Like it's like the Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> like the Jeopardy that de- 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 yeah yeah yep. or like the end like the light the end of the night at the club though that's yeah. when they turn the lights but on. they turn the lights on and oh like, look the lights there on there we go okay yeah I can talk for hours I'm but you yeah. gotta go get that lobster roll I'm going to go get that lobster roll I'm so excited <laughs> people go to Malibu for Nobu <laughs> yeah I go to Malibu for lobster rolls and Nobu Nobu is yeah. really Nobu good it's really good the the quality is yeah top better tier. be but price. <laughs> But I'm craving that lobster roll. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have that lobster roll, and I hope you enjoy the I'm lobster I'm going to go stuff my face with things other than <laughs> dick. <laughs> Personally, I find lobster rolls to be more I finally delicious said something than sexual, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just to wrap up the perfect penis size. Oh, yeah. It question. does not. Yeah, it does does not not matter. matter. But the size of the lobster roll is what matters. Oh, yeah. The size of the amount of lobster that they give me in my lobster roll is that matters. But penis size, all good. Whatever you got, you can work with. I have, we'll talk about it next time on the podcast, but I'll give them a little like teaser. I think I have a cum fetish. I love making guys come and I love 
watching guys like my goal is to make them ejaculate but we're going to talk about that maybe next time oh okay yeah before the light goes out again yeah (laughs) (laughs) to be continued to be continued scarlett thank you so much for coming on thank you so much for having me holly can you tell everybody where they can find you online you can find me on instagram uh my instagram is scarlett sage x on there you will see a link all all of my links and wherever i am is on that link and then my twitter is scarlett x sage yeah fantastic and then you guys can find me at holly randall on instagram and on twitter if you want to support this podcast go to patreon.com slash holly randall unfiltered thank you guys so much for joining us and i'll see you next time With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, Plus, enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal.